Hello out there, internet land. Today it's uh, it's Monday, it's May 29th, and uh, I'm Chesney. I'm here with another episode of Modern Mostly Biased Musicology for you. So last time uh, I had a review on the Sgt. Pepper's 50th anniversary uh, remaster, so please go check that episode out and check that uh, review out. Uh, at the end of that review, I made a comment that today we we briefly, and, and I do mean briefly here, we're going to chat just briefly on Dave Navarro. Um, you know, I, th this is kind of a comment that, that leads into our most important topic of the day, um, which I'll get to in a minute, but Dave Navarro, the poor guy, man. So the guy's like the guitar player for... Uh, Jane's Addiction, uh, and and you know Jane's Addiction is, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, they're you know one of the quintessential bands of the '90s for most people. And yet every time a media outlet talks to Dave Navarro, it's always what happened with the Chili Peppers. Well, I'm getting sick of people asking Dave Navarro what happened with the Chili Peppers, man. The Chili Peppers had Dave Navarro in the band for one album and roughly five years of touring. Uh, John Fusciante, uh, you know, quit the band at the time uh, and, you know, it was unfortunate. Like, it, for me, Fusciante is, uh, is the Chili Peppers, really. Um, but that being said, One Hot Minute is a pretty decent album. Like, it's not, by, by no means is One Hot Minute their best album. Uh, or even necessarily top three, but there's some key tunes on that record. I still like listening to it start to finish. So stop giving Dave Navarro a hard time. It didn't work out. He understands why it didn't work out and he doesn't hold a grudge. Ask him about Jane's Addiction. Ask him about what's new coming out. So these major media outlets that are talking to these people, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little disappointed in, in, in the lack of, you know, quality journalism call it uh, you know Rolling Stone uh, Guitar World Guitar Player all the major major media players out there uh, especially in the music and entertainment industry very few of them are taking a lot of risks I can appreciate uh, NPR uh, and some of their uh, outputs especially with like the Tiny Music Desk series but step up the game guys it's now up to us uh, in the digital realm, uh, video bloggers, podcasters, and, uh, you know, just overall bloggers to step a bar game and have a little bit more, uh, risk, right? Risk in journalism, rock and roll journalism, ladies and gentlemen, uh, read some Hunter S. Thompson for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, and you'll be pleasantly surprised and you'll learn something. Uh, just about what journalism really is or was because now we get a lot of this fake news Fake news. Why do we have fake news now part of that's the internet and this is my next challenge to those of us out here in the internet and digital realms do Yourselves a favor if you're a blogger if you're a video blogger if you're a podcaster uh, Whatever it might be and you're trying to do it within a journalistic or a nature of any kind broadcasting nature Fact check, fact check, fact check, okay? Don't just throw out some random shit just to be cool and think that you've got a good news story. That's not doing anybody a favor. Not yourself, not anyone else, not the rest of the world. But it leads me to the topic of the day. Over the weekend, we lost another great rock and roll artist, great musician, fantastic in uh, Mr. Greg Allman. Uh, now, Greg holds almost the record. He's second only to Nikki Six from Motley Crue for having the most number of times he has been thought to have been dead. Now, unfortunately, this time is for real. He passed away Saturday uh, due to liver cancer. Uh, and, you know, just a note on that, guys, out there. Uh, not very many of the media outlets. I know that they're all, and we should. We should focus on the music. We should focus on the art. Uh, but let's take a quick step back and look at a little bit of a lesson because 
here's Greg Allman, passed away at 69. We've had a number of, uh, you know, the 60s into the early 70s artists uh, and legends start to pass uh, over the last, you know, year or two here. And the majority of them are dying before 70. Uh, and, and for, you know, similar reasons, uh, be it cancer or, uh, or otherwise, uh, you know, related, you know, health problems, um, that era of artist in rock and roll lived hard, right? They lived hard, they lived fast, and, you know, unlike his brother Dwayne, he didn't die young and leave a beautiful corpse. So, uh, in the end, you know, Greg, I'm sure, had a, a tough time. Uh, and his hard drinking, hard partying lifestyle caught up to him. Um, and it's just, it's, it's kind of sad. So for all of the other artists, and even if you're not an artist, for those of us out there that, you know, look at uh, a rock and roll lifestyle, um, try looking a little outside of, uh, of the, you know, the sex, drugs, and, and, and booze, and alcohol portion of the party lifestyle because you don't need it guys you don't need to uh to be all hopped up all the time and we will have another conversation one day about all that stuff but um the important lesson here is that it does take a toll on your body and uh it's it sucks these guys are paying the price uh at in what my opinion is a you know too young an age so but back to greg allman greg allman fantastic musician allman brothers band had a lot of solo output as well um, now, my one uh, thing with Greg Allman is, is, is I, in my opinion, he's underrated, right? He is kind of underrated. Uh, the main reason being is that up until now, his death, the majority of any out, uh, output from media articles regarding the Allman Brothers band always comes back to his brother, Dwayne. Dwayne Allman died young. He's one of the, uh, I believe he's in the 27 Club, but I'd have to, I'll do the fact check on that one to be sure for you guys. But uh, Dwayne Allman died young. You know, uh, everybody talks about Dwayne uh, and, and the Allman Brothers, like they, they're, you know, one of the first, or if not the first uh, jam band. And they've always had this highlight of their dual guitar lead attack and harmonizations. Uh, in the early days between Dwayne Allman and Dickie Betts. Um, and, and there's always been a focus on the guitar players within that band, even in the later years. Uh, you know, more recently, and by recently, like within the last 20 years, uh, the guitar duties have been taken on by, uh, you know, people like Warren Haynes and Derek Trucks. All of these guys are, are highlighted for their playing in magazines and it's not as often that we you know we see an official exclusive highlight on Greg Allman uh, and one that deals exclusively with him it always comes back to his brother and how he felt about the loss of Dwayne and what that meant to the band and, and all that kind of thing and I think it kind of sucks I mean uh, Greg was the glue in the Allman Brothers band. If you listen to any of their music, whether it's Greg's keyboard playing on his Hammond uh, or piano or his rhythm guitar playing, if it wasn't for him, the rest of those guys and the, that dual lead sound would be lost and would, would sound empty, right? Uh, he's what's keeping those guys together. Um, Every band has sort of a band leader. There's a talent showcase and then there's a band leader. It's funny because Greg, even though he was the lead singer, and, and yeah, man, he has a great voice. Tons of soul, Greg Allman. Um, it always comes back to that dual lead guitar and who the guitar players are in that band. And it's because of the jam nature of the band. And they, they get a lot of focus and a lot of highlight, you know, above and beyond the vocalist because the songs are are a little bit longer uh, and you know the vocals are actually one of the, the, the smaller points of it so uh, 
there, there was just actually a, a, an article released by uh, Rolling Stone which talked to Billy Gibbons and he actually highlighted uh, Greg's you know musicality and, and, and just what he meant so you know for anyone out there that's interested go, go take a, a read of that because you know Billy Gibbons uh, he, he's got a great ear uh, another amazing blues musician and he knows what he's talking about so for those of you who don't know the Almond Brothers, man, that's like quintessential uh, southern rock uh, jam band. They uh, are definitely a huge influence on you know jam bands of today uh, or more modern times like Fish. Um, so you know the the key with them though, compared to like you know some people might say, well, Fish, you know, it's really it's a Grateful Dead with those guys. And so Grateful Dead's a different type of jam band, really, right? Like, Grateful Dead is much more avant-garde, experimental in a way. Um, there's always a lot of structure within uh, the Allman Brothers music. And you got to bring that back to Greg, because Greg, you know, really is the, the primary songwriter of the band. Um, and his lyricism and, and everything else has a story. He's got something to say. Uh, and his vocals just have a lot of soul. So uh, everybody, go listen to the Almond Brothers. It, it really doesn't matter which album you listen to. I mean, everybody always pushes you towards the early stuff. Live at the Fillmore East is is obviously you know quintessential Almond Brothers listening. If you're going to start somewhere, start there. It, it was almost always about their live element more so than their uh, their in studio recordings, anyways. Um, so that's that's always a, a go-to record to listen to. Uh, take a challenge. Take a challenge. They got a song called "Come and Go Blues." Uh, it, it was written by Greg and the Allman Brothers did it. I think it was on the Eat a Peach record. I'll fact check that. Uh, but the band version of it is a little bit peppier, uh, you know, blues number. Greg did a solo version of it. Check it out, man. It is one of my favorite, favorite acoustic guitar songs. Uh, you can play it on electric as well. Actually, more recently, I've been playing it on my uh, uh, on my ES355 um, with the hollow body and it, and you know a nice sort of semi dirty jazz tone. Man, that that song's killer. It's uh, it's a, an open G uh, tuning. Uh, with with finger style so for the guitar players out there take the challenge and and learn that song man. that that song is a, is a is a beast to play with the solo version by Greg Allman um, it, it's it's challenging and very rewarding uh, as a musician to be able to play that tune uh, for anyone else out there vocalists keyboardists that, that's the thing I mean Greg was a multi-instrumentalist right guy played Hammond uh, Hammond organ and and this is in a band that southern rock sound which is is very different from some of the other Hammond organ bands of the time I mean we you know a lot of the organ was was within more prog rock uh, so it was featured a lot more frequently at least to us now like the modern day what we, when we think of Hammond organ we're thinking of deep purple we're thinking of uh, 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 you know, a little bit of uh, Pink Floyd and these kinds of things with keyboards. We don't always realize what, it, how much it affected or had a sound within you know some of these other artists, uh, particularly Southern rock and the and the U.S. artists with the Doors and things of that nature. So, so never forget about that. That he was a multi instrumentalist. So, biggest thing, guys, pay some respect to Greg Allman. Listen to the Allman Brothers. You know, get get some education on them. You're gonna love it. It's great music, uh, and just you know, be uh, be open-minded and and take it all in. Okay, from one end to the other. Uh, when it comes to southern blues, uh, there really is no no better as far as like taking true blues uh, roots music and giving it that southern rock flavor. Um, so that's that's. We'll leave it at that for today. Uh, but that's my challenge. Listen to Greg Allman, listen to the Allman Brothers, and uh, I'll be back with you to, to highlight something new. Uh, and, and actually, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at something much more new and modern 
for the next episode because there's been a little bit of uh, a highlight about the old stuff but we got it we can't forget about the new okay this is me signing off leave some comments let me know your thoughts and i'll uh, talk to you later